Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and I'm visiting you from the future. I never actually recorded an intro to this episode, whoops, but today I'm sharing with you my best attempts to engrave these cute little ceramic camping mugs. Um, they came out pretty good. This was our best attempt. Um, we're gonna walk through the whole thing. I'm gonna show you how to do all of this step by step, uh, but we did fail at this today. I'm sharing it with you anyway because I think it's important to see the failures as well as the successes, and I think there's a lot that you guys can learn from in here um, if I'm just being honest with you guys up front like the the haunted house here and we can zoom in on this the haunted house up front looks really really great but as we curve around the mug here and we get into like the bats and the ghosts uh, we start to be able to see these black dots now these black dots are deep into the mug this is not the lasers failure to break through the surface it's just still black for some reason and I I don't know why and we don't end up figuring it out in the video that said, there's a ton of great artwork tutorial stuff in here for you guys to learn from. Uh, there's a ton of little hacks for your rotary tool and a lot of other great information. So I recommend watching it through anyway. And I mean, even with that said, we get really close to something that's usable. So you might be able to take it that last mile. I'm looking forward to being able to see what you guys end up doing with this. But for now, let's get right into the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Let's start the show. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to need to do if we want to get our spooky mugs engraved is we're going to need some artwork. So I found a couple of packs online that I think you're really going to enjoy. This website's super cool. Southern Smoke Engraving sent me this link and uh, it's amazing. So I have to take a second and show you. Uh, let's go check this out. So this website is called designbundles.net and they've got all kinds of themed vector packs that you can download. Uh, to use with your projects and the best part is they have great licenses and we're going to talk about that in a second but the first thing we need is some Halloween packs so let's type in Halloween and uh, we'll find some spooky graphics here if we scroll down we might be able to find a couple packs that are going to fit our needs today uh, and I, I kind of want like a spooky Halloween kind of landscape I think around the mug so let's scroll through and uh, this one here we purchased already so we'll go ahead and open that one up uh, so I can show you that and we'll keep scrolling down here and I should there should be another one uh, ah right here uh, already purchased that's the other one so we'll go ahead and open those two up and uh, let's take a look at these so the first one I really wanted this one because it had the ghosts and the other one doesn't have ghosts on it uh, so I I wanted this one so we went ahead and bought that one and uh, we also wanted to get this pack right here this one has like the cool creepy trees right and like maybe the haunted house so we might be able to use some of these uh even the witch uh there's lots and lots of stuff in these packs and as you can see they're on sale right now but even when they're not on sale they're not that expensive so we definitely don't want to miss this out and uh the best part is the license okay so let's check it out so there's two options for the licenses uh, one is the premium license and one is the corporate license and the corporate license is a little more expensive but we can go through and take a look at what these licenses mean so here's their license page and uh, here are the things covered by the premium license okay so uh, the premium license covers one person to use the licensed products and what is covered uh, make and sell physical end products so shirt mugs posters whatever uh, make and sell digital designs with fonts so if you have fonts uh, from this website and you want to like orient them in a certain way to like make cute sayings or something uh, you're allowed to do that uh, you can use a web font on your website so if you download a web font from this store you can use it on your website uh, no problem up to a hundred thousand views a month uh, you can use the font in broadcasting videos or streaming again up to a hundred thousand views per month uh, and you can make uh, new digital designs and print on demand designs by modifying licensed graphics into new works okay so if you want to modify these graphics into like a scene would be a good example and then sell that uh, with something like Zakiki which would be a print on demand surface uh, this license will cover that uh, if you upgrade to the uh, corporate license you get mostly the same stuff but you're also getting the uh, use a font on your website unlimited monthly views so if you plan on doing that the corporate license might be better for you uh, and use a font in broadcasting videos or streaming unlimited monthly views so again if you're like a big streamer or something and uh, you get a ton of views the corporate license might be good for you 
Um, again, this includes the print on design or the uh, print on demand services. So you can use this with print on demand uh, and you know, just kind of that, that kind of stuff. Uh, what's not covered reselling, sharing, or giving away any licensed items. So you can't give this stuff away uh, or resell it. Okay. The other thing is uh, sending as is designs uh, to any other person or party so they can make physical goods, right? So again, mostly just sharing. You're not allowed to share that. Uh, some products offer the print-on-demand add-on license for additional charge, which allows you to have print-on-demand companies or third-party printers manufacture end products on your behalf. So if you want that, make sure you get the print-on-demand add-on. That's different than uh, your own print-on-demand service, right? So uh, up here it says make new digital designs and uh, print-on-demand designs by modifying licensed graphics into new works. This is if you're hosting the print-on-demand, if you are the person doing the print-on-demand. Uh, this additional print-on-demand add-on is for uploading these graphics to a print-on-demand uh, service like Printful then you're going to need this print on demand and it's only available for some of the graphics so that's just something to keep an eye on but the best thing about either of these licenses is that you can use these to make and sell physical end products right that's what most of us do uh and there's no limit to the usage what that's crazy usually they limit you uh, at like a thousand products per year or ten thousand products a year or whatever there's no limit on these so you can download them and you can use them and you can sell that product indefinitely no problem and that's why we are patronizing uh this business today so uh we went ahead and picked up this one again the halloween bundle 25 svg files and uh this other one uh which is no longer up here let me see uh this one right here uh, the Halloween SVG bundle vector elements. Uh, so we download both of these and we're going to see now if we can uh, draft up, I guess, a, uh, a, a cute little Halloween scene that we can sell on our mugs. So uh, first, before we start that, we're actually going to tackle the rotary and we're going to see if we can get our mug onto the rotary. So let's go set that up. And then once that's out of the way and we can kind of breathe easy, we'll come back to this and we'll take care of the artwork. So I'll see you guys in just a second. So the first thing you really need is your rotary tool set up. If you don't know how to set up your rotary tool, click the link up here uh, and that will take you to the official fiber laser rotary setup video that will walk you through how to get this thing set up. This tutorial depends on your pre-existing knowledge on how to set these bad boys up. Uh, once this is set up, we really need to just focus on how to get our mug onto the chuck. Our mugs are ceramic, and if we try to just fit our mug on here and expand the jaws out to hold this in place, we're gonna shatter the mug, uh, and that's not what we want. So uh, we need to come up with a creative solution to keep this on the jaws without the pressure from the jaws breaking our ceramic mug. Now, I've got this dirty old mouse pad. This is just an Amazon Basics mouse pad uh, laying around, and this is gonna be great for maintaining grip on the mug without necessarily uh, putting too much pressure on it. Uh, and all we really need here to get started is a pair of scissors. And we're just gonna cut a thin strip of this, just thin enough so that our, uh, our mug can be gripped by the teeth, uh, but not too thick because we want it to sit nicely. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut that right down the middle. Not the straightest cut that I've ever cut in my life, but it'll do. Uh, and again, we're just gonna cut another strip out of it and this is about the thickness we want okay right here this is just thick enough for us to be able to grip uh the mug with the teeth uh so we're just going to cut that right down the edge here again not the straightest cut in the world but doesn't really make a huge difference so once we have our little strip uh we're good to head back over to the machine now we're trying to make just a little belt out of this and uh, all we need to do is take a little bit of super glue or if you have it uh hot glue would work for this probably too uh, it should be strong enough but we have super glue we're just going to put a little bit right on the edge here just like that and we're going to loop the whole thing around on itself uh, and the main thing that we want is we want the grippy side of this to be facing outwards so that that can put pressure on the cup. So uh, I've gone ahead and super glued that and we're just going to hold it here for a couple seconds and we'll be right back when it dries. And super glue works really well on this uh, mouse pad material, guys. So you're not going to have any problems super gluing that. And we just want to go ahead and stretch our belt around the, uh, the teeth here that we're going to grab our mug with. It's important to leave. So you just got to kind of work it a little bit and you'll get it on there. Uh, just like that. And it's important to leave the space where 
our uh, gluing job is, we want to make sure that that is not sitting on top of a jaw because that jaw will then be further away, which will throw our, our mug balance off. So just make sure that your glued piece is between jaws. And once that's on, you can go ahead and slip the mug over the jaws and uh, you can tighten your uh, rotary tool until it's got a nice good grip on the mug, uh, just like that. And now that's not going anywhere, uh, nice and smooth. And with that done, uh, we can go ahead and turn our rotary tool on and start designing some artwork for our mug. So with our grippy tension belt thing out of the way, uh, we know that works. We tested it, we spun it. It works really well, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Uh, all we need to do now in order to start our artwork is get the outer diameter of our mug here so that we can calculate the area that we have to work with. Uh, it's pretty simple, so we're just gonna turn the mug upside down here and uh, we'll go ahead and use our caliper to get a width on this. You should be able to get the teeth most of the way around. If you can't get it around going flat, just kind of pop it over the top there. And uh, we will see that we have a diameter of 82.3 millimeters. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and set that right there so we can reference that in one second when we get Illustrator open. So all we need to do to find the width that we have to work with is multiply the diameter times pi, and that gives us the circumference. Uh, our diameter in this case is 82.3 millimeters. We've got it right here times 3.14. And when we do the math here on our calculator, 82.3 times 3.14 gives us 258.42. Uh, and this is going to be the circumference that we have around the outside. Uh, so with that number in mind, all we need to do is take a height measurement of our mug here. And uh, we can go ahead and zero our caliper out. And we'll just take a quick height, uh, just like this. We'll go ahead and pop that up. And uh, it looks like we've got about 68 millimeters to work with on the height. So now we have our two dimensions we need to create our workspace. Uh, so we'll go ahead and close the calculator and we can grab our square tool or our rectangle tool. And we're gonna create a new rectangle and the width is going to be our circumference. So 258.42 uh, and our height is going to be 68 millimeters. So we wanna make sure those are inches, right? So 258.42 two millimeters uh, and that should be great so we can go ahead and hit okay and it's going to build our mug so this is the outside of our mug right here we can get rid of that and zoom out and uh, here it is this is the full wrap so all the way around the mug this is the full wrap of our mug and uh, the one thing we do want to do is we actually want to shorten this up a little bit it's a little bit wide and the reason I say that is because we can't engrave where the handle is um, so we need to actually take this chunk of this out of the equation so we're gonna go ahead and just, again, zero out our caliper, and we're just gonna measure the approximate width area of that mug. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than I have to. It looks like 23 millimeters we wanna reduce from our, uh, our width. So we'll come back into the transform, uh, and we're going to uh, remove 23 millimeters. It's about an inch, okay? So if we can go from 9.78 to 8.78 on our width there, uh, and that's gonna be good. But I don't wanna change that just yet because again, we forgot to unlock our uh, proportions here. So let's make sure we have that unlocked before we make any changes uh, or we will change our height. And then we can go from 9.78 to 8.78. And when we hit enter, uh, it will just shorten that width up for us a little bit. So now we've accounted for the handle, which is great. So the next thing we need to do is actually build our, uh, our scene, right? That we wanna put on the mug. We're just gonna add a little bit of stroke to this so that we can see what we're doing and get rid of the fill so that we can you know, add a bunch of stuff to our, uh, our little scene here. The next thing we need to do is open up our folders that have our brand new SVGs we just purchased so that we can bring them into our scene. So I've already gone ahead and unzipped and opened one. I thought I'd show you the second one. So we did Halloween one. You can see the unzipped uh, extracted folder here. Now we need Halloween, uh, the second one here, uh, just I guess Halloween. Um, we'll go to extract all and we'll hit extract and it's gonna extract that into a folder we can open. And uh, one of the really cool things about these packs is that you have access to them individually and as one big file. I like to use them in one big file this time, but individually could be useful as well. So here's our new folder here and we can go ahead and open that up and inside the pack, you'll see we've got the Halloween folder and uh, there is a bundle, so we'll open that. And uh, we've got a bunch of different 
folders here that kind of organize these. So they are, again, individual, uh, so you can search for them easily. They come with a DXF, EPS, PNG, and SVG. Or, uh, you know, if you are wanting to open them all at once, they usually contain a file uh, that just has everything all in one spread, which is, uh, that's what I would like to do. So we can go ahead and hit yes and open this. And here we go. There are all of our different vectors, and we can go ahead and pick from these as we see fit. Uh, so the first thing that I want uh, definitely on this mug is like a cool little Halloween scene, right? So maybe like one of these. Uh, or one of these. I, I kind of like this one with the super tall tree. So let's just drag it into the tab where we are working on our mug. And uh, we can go ahead and reduce the size of this here. And we're just going to start placing things. Let's just place some stuff and uh, see what we can build out, right? Uh, we've got our little bottom line there. So we should be able to pretty easily uh, kind of combine these files. And I'm going to show you guys what to do when we're done so that uh, all of this is laser friendly. But it's most of the way there already, which is pretty great. Uh, so I am just going to, again, we're just going to kind of do a little resizing here. And we just want to kind of make it so that it looks like one cohesive scene. Uh, I think something like this is going to look pretty good. Uh, that looks pretty sick right there. So we don't have that hard edge off of the uh, the tree here anymore. We're going to cover that up with this one. And it looks like we got a couple uh, like crosses in there. I do want one of the haunted houses as well. Uh, since we have some multiple colored vectors in here, I'll show you how to deal with that. So uh, if we grab, I think maybe this haunted house here looks pretty good. We can go ahead and drag that into our file. And uh, we do need to do a little work to get this one done. But first, let's just get it resized. And we can go ahead and drop it uh, into our scene here. Something like that uh, looks pretty good. And we do need to get rid of this yellow because this is going to confuse EasyCAD. So we're just going to right click and ungroup. And we're going to select a piece of yellow and do select, same, and fill color. And we can go ahead and delete those. And there we go. It's nice and transparent. No problems there. Uh, and again, we're kind of moving quick. You can spend a little more time to, uh, to get this just right. Uh, but that all looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we're seeing there uh, on that. What else would be cool? What else would be cool? Uh, I really think that the... Um, let's let's go back and check the other one. Maybe some ghosts would be nice. So maybe we can grab this ghost and this one. And uh, that one looks a little happy. We're kind of doing a serious scene over here. So let's grab that ghost. And let's bring him in. Yeah, he's looking pretty spooky right there. We can give him a little tilt there. And uh, maybe a couple pumpkins like this one and that one. Those guys look good. So we can grab those and we'll bring those into the scene. You can see like now we all we have to do is really just kind of like build out this scene. Uh, I will go ahead and time lapse this for you guys so that you don't have to sit and listen to me talk while I do it. And then we'll pick up where we left off. Okay. <laughs> So one thing I do just want to point out here, so if we delete these yellow, you can see that we actually don't have our windows here. That's pretty easy to fix. So all we need to do is select our windows and select our house. And we're going to come in here to Pathfinder and we're just going to click Trim. And then now we can ungroup these and select the yellow again. So we're going to do Select, Same, uh, Fill Color and hit Delete. And now we've got those nice cutouts. One thing you do want to just check for, move the house out of the way. And just make sure that there aren't any double lines in here. There's one right there. Uh, and the rest seem to be gone. So that's fine. And then you can just go ahead and replace your house uh, wherever that makes sense for you. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that one little thing uh, just in case that was tripping you up. Uh, but here's our Halloween scene. We're almost done. I'm just going to add a couple more elements. I saw a witch. I'd really like to include like a witch. Uh, I kind of like this one. She's looking pretty evil. So we'll go ahead and drop her in here. And uh, let's just get this resized. And uh, we can drop her, like, I don't know, like over here, right? She's flying to the house or something. Uh, so we can drop that in there. And it looks like it just needs, like, one more thing. I, maybe a couple bats, right? The bats would be cool. Let's do a couple bats. Why don't we have a bat yet? Uh, and again, I'm, I'm kind of just kind of flying through this, guys. Uh, but you could you could do a much better job of this, I'm sure. So we'll just maybe a couple different bats here, uh, maybe a few different sizes and a few varying angles. 
uh, would be nice. Something kind of like this. And uh, I think that's complete. That's looking pretty done to me. So here's the next thing that you're going to want to do. And that is going to be to delete your outline. We already know that this is the right size. It's almost edge to edge. Uh, if you wanted to do something smaller, like a smaller scene, you could do that too. I'm just doing a full wrap to show you what's possible. But you don't have to use this whole space. You can use just a little of it. And uh, so we'll go ahead and delete our outline. And here's the last step, and this is important. Uh, if we select everything, you can see there's a ton of spots down here where our vectors are overlapping. Uh, whether it's been built in and it's overlapping, or we purposefully overlapped it, uh, that's a problem. EasyCAD is going to hate that. The grass is a, a great example here. So all we have to do to fix that is come over here with everything uh, selected to the Pathfinder, and we just have to hit Unite. And when we hit Unite, it's going to fuse all of these into one final total shape. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and look for things that are kind of garbage, that don't belong, like this uh, piece of grass here inside of this pumpkin's eye. We can delete that. And uh, just look for any other inconsistencies, things that, that don't necessarily look right. Uh, again, you can spend a lot of time doing this. We're just kind of blowing through it right now. Uh, the other thing I don't particularly like is this just kind of hole here uh, where our vectors didn't quite line up. So we can fix that with the blob brush. And we'll just go ahead and paint that black, and that's perfect. So that's fused that into a one piece. And uh, that's it, guys. Uh, this is looking really good. So we can group this, and we'll save it uh, to our desktop as, like, Halloween mug or spooky mug. I like. Let's do spooky. Spooky mug. Okay? Uh, so we'll save that to our desktop, and then we'll jump over to um, EasyCAD, and we can import our Illustrator version 8 file. And uh, we'll jump into Rotary Mark, and we'll, we'll take a look at how well that's going to work for us. So we're ready to start in EasyCAD, and the first thing we need to do, uh, as always, is import our artwork. So let's, on our desktop here, find our spooky mug, and we can import that. And uh, we're going to hit C to center it up on our engraving area. And we're going to hold Control and use the arrow keys. And we just want to turn this so that it is sideways. Uh, the top of our mug in our rotary tool is on the left, so we want to make sure that the top of our graphic is on the left. And we're not resizing it to fit in our workspace, because again, the rotary tool is going to be doing that work for us. Just hit C one more time to make sure that it's nice and center, and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, the last thing we're going to do here is just hatch it. We've already grouped it. Make sure it's grouped, and uh, we'll give it a nice clean hatch. 0 0.025 millimeters should be fine. Uh, we don't want a cross hatch. We don't need one, so we can turn off hatch 2. Um, we'll come back over here to hatch 1. And we just want our uh, angle here to be zero degrees. That'll be a perfectly horizontal line, okay? And uh, that's that's what we're looking for. So we'll leave that at zero, and we'll hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and hatch that for us. And uh, with that done, we can now uh, go into Rotary Mark to start doing our work. Uh, we'll come in here, laser, and uh, not rotate text mark, right? Not, uh, not Rotary Marking 2. We don't want any of these weird ones. We just want Rotary Mark. So we'll go ahead and select that. That's going to open up here. We're going to do a split size of 0.5. That's two lines at 0 0.025. That's two lines for every split, uh, which should be perfect. And uh, we don't need mark selected. We just want to mark everything on the page down here. Uh, and all of that stuff seems to be taken care of. Again, uh, if you don't know how to set up your rotary tool, you can go ahead and uh, check that out uh, in the link down below the rotary setup video now this should be pretty good But the first thing we need to do before we can actually run this we don't want to mark it yet uh, We need to check two things we need to check to make sure that our uh, Handle is not going to get in the way and we need to make sure that the height of our graphic is actually at the right place to match our rotary tool So we're gonna quit this for just a second. This is all set up, right? But we're gonna quit it for just a second here and we are going to create a box in our workspace that is the height of our graphic. So we're going to come down here, and you just want to make sure you include all of the bottom of the ground, because we don't want any of the ground to, uh, to slip off there. And we want to make sure we include the tallest objects in the scene. Uh, that looks like it's going to be the bats, so we can just drag this out. And we just want to make sure that that bat wing, we want to make sure that's included there. Uh, so there we go. So with that done, uh, the last thing we have to do is just pull this back down so that it's within space. And we can select our Halloween scene, and we're actually going to cut it out. We're going to cut it. And we're going to light this box. And this box is just going to let us know that our top and bottom are aligned with our mug. That's really important. So let's light this now in 2D mode, no rotary. We're going to light this now and make sure that our mug lines up. 
At this point, guys, we are going to want to make sure that we are focused really well. So uh, let's come in here, and as you can see, we're off a bit. We're just going to raise our focus up so that we're just touching the top of the mug uh, because we're going to have a pretty small split size, so we don't need to do any special focusing. Now, ideally, guys, this red line will be at the just at the top of the lip, and this will be at the bottom, uh, and it's looking really, really close. Uh, I could scooch this up just a little bit, and I would do that by loosening these bolts down here and actually moving the entire rotary tool up like a millimeter, but I think it's close enough for today. We're not coming off the bottom. All that really matters is right at the point where we focused. It's going to curve off of the mug on the sides and we're not worried about that. We're just worried about right where our focal stick uh, focused us up because that's the only area that's gonna be engraving and that looks well onto the mug. So I'm really happy with the way this is set up, but if you need to, scoot your rotary tool to get that to fit well. Uh, but we like what we're seeing right now so we can go ahead and move on to fixing the edge of uh, where our handle is sitting. So in order to line up our handle, we're going to stop lighting. We can get rid of this box and paste our graphic back in. And uh, that's gonna take a second to load in, but that's good. And we want to come to laser again. We're gonna pop back into rotary mark and we're gonna hit uh, the light, the red button here, F1. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna rotate the mug to the starting position uh, and then the mug will rotate through. So we want our starting position to line up with our handle because that means that nothing behind the handle is going to be engraved. And our graphic, because we were smart about how we designed it, isn't long enough to make it all the way back around to the other end of the handle. One other thing you do want to check before you uh, light this, and this is going to make a big difference, is we want to make sure our part diameter is correct. So we had our part diameter from earlier, remember, in order to get our math done. And that was 82.3. So let's go ahead and just type that in here, 82.3 and hit OK because that is gonna affect our light. So once that's done, now we can go ahead and light this. So uh, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and hit light here. And we have this little red dot and that's where our uh, engraving is going to begin. So, so as you can see, our start line here isn't lined up with our handle. Our handle's all the way down here. So we're actually gonna pop in our tool and we're going to loosen this up just enough to turn it and we want it to start right at our handle, maybe just a little less, because remember we left an inch there, right? So we want, it should be an inch from here to there. That should be about an inch. Uh, and I know you guys are having a hard time seeing this, but we do want it to start right, uh, right here at the beginning of the handle. If you can see it right there, uh, that looks pretty good to me with the red dot right there. So with that done, uh, we can go ahead and tighten this up. And with that nice and tight, we can stop lighting and the cup is going to rotate back to its uh, middle position. If you're in EasyCAD and you don't see an option to stop lighting, uh, just hit escape on the keyboard. Hitting escape will pull up the uh, stop red light mark and uh, the cup will rotate back to its beginning position. You guys will also notice now that our middle position is 180 degrees away from the handle of our mug. That's what we want because it's going to start again right before the mug. So this is perfect placement. If you see this, you're doing it right and you're good to go. And once everything else is taken care of, guys, we've checked all the boxes. We've made sure everything is working correctly. All we need to do is go ahead and hit mark. So let's hit mark and see how this bad boy comes out. Okay guys, so that was taking way too long and we we're actually having a hard time getting through the enamel line by line. So I think a spread might be better. We're not gonna go crazy, but we are going to increase our split size. Uh, and I think the best way to do that is probably to take this from uh, 0 0.05 to 0.2. Uh, so that we're gonna do four times more lines as once. The other thing we're going to do is uh, we're gonna quit rotary mark here for a second. And uh, on our default parameter here, we are going to just take our speed down to maybe like 750. I do this, guys, um, I, I record these episodes kind of on the fly, so I don't know how they're gonna come out. So you're seeing this is like real time right now. 
Uh, so let's try this again with a little bit of a bigger split, not a huge split, but a little bit bigger uh, and a little bit slower speed. And uh, maybe we can get through another one of these. You'll notice the fuzzies. There was kind of like a cobweb, very spooky for Halloween. There's kind of like a cobweb uh, coming off. And I believe that's just from the enamel uh, coating on it. I'm not that worried about it. Uh, also, the little bits of black paint were kind of like chipping off there at the end uh, on the ceramic. I think that a second pass might be in order, but let's get through one first. Let's try to get through one. Luckily, I've got four of these mugs, so uh, we're just going to come over here to Laser, and we're going to hop back into Rotary Mark, and we're going to try this thing again. So uh, let's give it another shot. Okay guys, so quick update, we're running our second pass now and that's great news because that means it's repeatable. It's probably going to take a couple passes to get through this uh, thicker black coat uh, before we can get down to the white ceramic. Um, now the second pass is running much, much faster as you can see and that is because we accidentally left hatch number three on. I had a 90 degree hatch uh, and it made the first pass take 10 times longer than it needed to take because every time that it was sweeping across with a zero degree, it would stop and run a 90 degree uh, every single line all the way up for the entire circumference of the cup. Uh, we are almost halfway done with our second pass now and it's been two minutes. The first pass all the way around the cup took nearly a half hour. So double check your hatches guys because it's really important. But our second pass is going really well. I think a third pass and we should be good to go. Important note, your rotary is only gonna go back to its original starting position if you let the job finish. So if you cancel the job in the middle, it's not gonna go back and you're never gonna be able to line it back up. So let it finish before making adjustments like turning off your third hatch uh, and then run it again. And uh, we're almost done with our second pass now. I think I might do a third and then we'll call it. We'll give it a good wash in the sink and see how it comes out. So uh, let's head back over to the video and see how things are going. So we're well into our third pass now, guys, and this is the one we're breaking through. So three passes, and if you don't mess up hatch number three, like I did, uh, you're looking at about three and a half minutes per pass. If we did a fourth pass, that'd be about 12 minutes per cup. Not bad, considering we're doing this on the fiber. You could probably speed that up a little bit more if you wanted to continue to increase your split size. Again, we're at a split size of 0.2 millimeters right now probably go a little bit bigger it's not as important uh, on the split size with the ceramic because you're not going to see those overlap lines you're going to see on steel so you could continue to increase the uh the split size there on that i kind of like it right here at point two so i think i'll leave it here but it's an option for you if you want this to go even faster and we're done with the third pass guys and i think what i'm liking for ceramic is actually a bigger split size so i think we're going to take this all the way up to a split size of one we're going to go to a split size of one millimeter for the final pass and we're going to see how we like this let's check it out pass number four final pass let's try it Okay guys, so we uh, made one last adjustment here. I've dropped our speed down to 500 and I've raised our frequency to 37, which is where we get our maximum pulse power. Uh, and I'm hoping to get through this in three or four passes because we're still just not quite getting through all of the ceramic. Uh, we're also going to try to adjust our mug handle positioning a little bit further just because we miscalculated that. This is the last one of these mugs that I have, so I hope that we can get it right. And uh, if we can, then this should be a neat little project for you guys to tackle because it's looking like really promising. We're just not quite there. So uh, again, we've slowed the speed down to about 500. We've raised our frequency to 37, which is my 
peak power output at 37 frequency okay and uh and we're gonna run it again i might even change the power we might just why not we'll just raise the power to 90 and uh we'll come back in here to laser and uh rotary mark just like we've been doing and uh let's make sure nothing in here else has changed i like the split size of one for the ceramic i'd never recommend this for like a steel tumbler but for the ceramic uh, a split size of one does seem to be working out for us uh, and we can uncheck all of this over here. Our power diameter is still good. So with that done, let's throw our last mug on and cross our fingers and hope this comes out. I'm expecting three, maybe four passes should do it. Let's take a look. So after all that guys, it's still not quite all white and I, I, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't really know what to do to get it to be all white. Uh, you, you may like it speckled black like this. Um, I'm not sure if that's something you're into. I would prefer that it'd be all white and I'm a little disappointed uh, that it didn't quite work out for us today. So, um, you know, it happens, right? Uh, sometimes things don't always work out and that's part of the channel too. Still, you may have learned something this episode. I, I really hope you did. Before we close out, I just want to give it one final pass here uh, with 750 speed, 50 power, and 25 frequency. Just because. Just because that's... I, I Just one more, right? What's one more? We're, we've damn near engraved through the entire mug at this point. It's very, very deep. But uh, let's give it one, one more pass just for the, the heck of it. And, uh, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, here we go. Last pass. Let's try it. Okay, guys. Well, that's it. We four attempts here and uh, four four failures. Um, you know, this was the last one that we did, and it just. It just couldn't seem to, to break away if we get this zoomed in here. Uh, we just couldn't seem to get through that black. And it seems deep. Even in the areas where it's still black, it seems deep. So I'm not sure why we couldn't uh, seem to get through it. But we made an attempt and I, you know, we have a great, that's a great little art tutorial in there. So there's still some value that you guys can take away from this video, even though we couldn't quite make it. We seemed closest here. I, you know, I wish that I could have figured this one out because these seem like they would have been really cool little gifts. I think what I'd recommend is following this entire tutorial and maybe trying metal versions of these. Uh, if I can find some on Amazon, I'll link them down below so that you can try these on like maybe a metal version of the camping mug and that might work better for you uh, rather than the ceramic because the ceramic just seems to be like really, really picky about settings and we, we just aren't getting it right. So again, I'm sorry that this had an unsatisfying ending for you, but it is what it is. And I wanted to share my experience with it either way, because I feel like it would probably help you guys out at least as a starting point. And uh, again, we had kind of like a cool little uh, art tutorial there in the beginning as well. So hopefully that helped you too. If you got value out of this video, uh, go ahead and smash the like button and let other people know that the content is good. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time I post a video. If you really, really love the channel and uh, you know it's, it's just done a lot for you and you want to support the show to make sure that it can continue on, don't forget to check out the Laser Master Academy. 
Hey guys, it's Alex from the future, and uh, this is the part of the video where I go on and on about the Patreon, but since recording this video, we've actually moved to the Laser Master Academy, so make sure you check that out instead. If you're already part of the Patreon, don't forget to switch over by the end of the year. You can find out everything you need to know at masters.lasereverything.net, and uh, it's got all the same benefits, the bonus live streams, it's got the... Uh, bonus podcast episodes. We've got all of the easy CAD and light burn parameters that you could ever hope for and a lot more. So make sure you go check that out. All right, let's wrap this thing up. And uh, while you're down there clicking the Patreon link, don't forget to check out the link to our Discord. It is our awesome online community that's free for everybody. Uh, there's a massive amount of knowledge in there. People are chatting every day. It's a great place to be. We're helping out the new guys. We're helping people pick machines. We're helping solve problems. Uh, we're sharing our work. Tons of great stuff. The Discord, uh, I think we're I think we're just about at a thousand members on the Discord now. So another great place. You don't want to miss out. So even when there aren't new episodes, there's a ton of laser everything content out there to consume. You just got to go check it out. The links to everything are down in the description. And uh, that's all I've got, guys. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Again, last time, I'm, I'm sorry this had an unsatisfying ending, but I will link metal versions of these down in the description if you maybe want to give those a try. But I'll link the ceramic ones too. Maybe you'll have better luck than me. They're inexpensive enough that it's worth it to try out. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.